Saturday Showdown. 하나 생명 e스포츠 대 B+ 기아. Yeah, playing into the the Marvel Death, not so fun. But uh, clearly, Joby got a lot, lot of confidence on the pick and a lot of good ults to steal. Not a less surprising to end up going through the draft this long, but the ult's gonna have a lot of power, locking down Callista. Uh, I mean, locking down anyone, a lot of targets who you wanna be able to land that CC on. See where the OK Savings Bank Breon can do it, much like they did in summer last year. Let's jump into the ref for game one. Well, that's true, but I think when you're learning as a second language, my fiance has complained about a lot of those things. Yes. Uh, excessively. So. My, my wife as well. We have a, a, like a conversation a day about something dumb about the English language. <laughs> and I just have to say, yes, that is in fact true. This is yeah. not fun for the Zinzao if he gets invaded here. And that is exactly what's happening. Gideon will be able to secure his Grump, but I don't know whether he's going to get a blue buff this game. As we can see, that. Mid lane still locked into the lane for now. Chovy dashing towards Karis and will not find the secondary chains. But now both of them moving into the river. Canyon started this one up, lands in the area, and Pay's moving over as well. I don't think that this blue buff is something that Bro are going to be able to take. And you can see that Gideon has already left. Has had priority pretty much the whole time in this lane. Chovy and Canyon moving up to try and challenge. Yeah, when he comes, Lightning does come on through there as Chovy does have level six. Does have that Crescent Guard up and available. Canyon down to 50% though as he does leap his way out of there. Has managed to grab their first buff, but it should be the other two going over to Bro here if they would like them. Obviously with the old... Oh, oh. there's another Twisted Advance forward as Canyon's moving down. Polo's in trouble, does still have Flash available, but I don't think he's getting out of this one. And there is the Ren to secure the kill onto the Nautilus. Canyon taking a fair bit of damage from Envy, but I don't think he's going to be 1v3ing this one. So first blood going over to Genji. He's going to take a bit of a shove ride towards Karis. He's going to be all right though as he throws down the Weaver's Wall. And there's the Flash in from Canyon. There goes Karis, the Chain Lash comes down, and that is an easy kill for Chovy. Uh, and immediately punished for it. And now they're looking for a dive on Morgan. Have fun. Yep. Nature's Grass comes down. He does get snared up as now Pays just throwing sticks into him. Slice and Dice, though, does get him out of there as they do have a seismic shove to pull back Canyon. He's taking a lot of damage. Morgan as well is now Genji underneath the turret. This is dangerous. The Silas does manage to take down the Talia, though, once again as Kane. He's going to join the fray. Only a couple more minions left remaining as Chovy picks up the aggro. He's got Dominus there as well if he'd like to use it. Doesn't even have to, and that is going to be a kill going over to Pays. We'll be able to figure this out, but I don't think anyone's going to be able to get here in time. So it should oh, be they Shelly. Look oh, never mind. Um, Genji are moving on over. There's lots of vision for Bro. They know exactly what's going on, but there is the Nature's Grasp. They managed to catch up Gideon. As Chovy picks up a death charge, there's the knock-up on Apollo. He's taken out immediately, but Lehen suffers the same fate. And now Morgan, he can slice over that wall if he would like to. There he goes, another vault forward is now Gideon taking a lot of damage, and Chovy is just annihilating the back line. There goes Gideon, and Chovy's even looking for more. Morgan in trouble, slowed down by the chain lashes. Keen vaulted on in, but that is Dominus as the response there from Morgan, and he gets to the safety of the inner turret. Gen G. They kind of just try to run away, losing as little members as possible, and that didn't really pan out. Oh dear. Um, that is a good seismic shove on the canyon. And he's tanking this turret, and will do so for a very long time. Pace has to eat the uh, Q from Karis to get himself out of there, uh, with Ajax still alive. Now Trovi is looking for a chance oh. of corruption. He connects it, MVP, nothing uh -huh. even Uh-huh. Well, yeah. hmm. there was a virus. Yeah. Um, not anymore. Envy has definitely used it as well, because it's on cooldown. As uh, somehow that dredge line missed. Death Charge does come on through here. Is now Keen trying to offer some damage back. Polu taking a lot, but Lahens is also in a lot of trouble. Karis not able to connect the rocks, though, because Canyon stood in the way. Another oh. Weaver's Wall coming on through here. That is an aggressive move as Seismic Shove goes entirely wide. Money now over to their coffers as Gideon slowed down. There is another Sky Strike coming on through. And yes, he uses the ult. Gideon is going to be able to keep himself alive, but they won't be able to use that for anything else. As there's that change of corruption you were talking about, and Seismic Shove is going to deal with Keen. So a little bit of an overstep, but the Nature's Grasp is going to put Polo in a very uncomfortable spot. Canyon with the Counter-Strike gets the flash out from Morgan and Karras. And he was trying to back! Oh dear, he is going to make it under his turret. He will be all right as that piercing arrow very close. Man, if Envy had some money this game. the most gold in the game. Yes. Uh, he probably did before those turrets as well as... 
Yeah, fix up chains of corruption. And Trivi is going to be able to secure this top out of turret as there is a flash forward from Envy. Does find the chains of corruption onto pace. Wind becomes lightning as there's the flash that has to be used. And now Fates Call is going to get Lahens out of there. Another wind becomes lightning as he oh, goes in. Oh, the Fates Call interrupts. And Gideon is going to go down that outplay. They didn't even need it. They were probably still going to win. And still. They managed to find it as now Canyon looking to wrap around. They do manage to take this turret and along with it, that bounty gold that we were talking about. But now they are getting closed in upon. Pace is very, very low, but there's a twist in advance onto Envy. Trevi still trying to take his opportunity as Karras going to be his first target. A Pierce is going to lock down the Varus and now Bro are just lying on the floor. Canyon. Finds the spite here onto Morgan. Chain Lash connects and Chovy just ends him. Man! I'll fight with the men. Exactly. Oh. As now they're engaging onto Chovy. This might be dangerous. Have they brought enough bad guys? Uh, the answer is maybe. As Depth Charge does come on through. Canyon going to join in on the bouncy castle. Is now Keen trying to find some autos. Fate's Call comes down once again as Morgan has got on top of Paze. But the hook is not really going to do it. And Paze is going to take down the crocodile. Canyon still wants to jump in. But he has 100 health. So I'm not sure about that one. That was an odd move. But still, he's managed to start up the fight. Envy's going to go down. Chovy still looking for an opportunity. Doesn't quite get it. As now Paze chasing after him. Has to be so scared about the Unraveled Earth. As the vault <laughs> is targeted. And that's very unfortunate. Fortunate for Karras as he is um, yeah. in the ensuing play canyon. Oh, um, oh. now Trovi is going 1v2. Polu does turn up. I think Trovi thought that he was just fighting the crocodile as the depth charge is going to connect onto said crocodile. Keen turns up as well. You know, he'll what? jump back on Valor and see what he can do. They do have very close to six turrets removed, seven actually, as Gideon is going to be able to slow down Canyon. In comes Karras, looking for that opportunity as he gets thrown back. Canyon now runs out of Counter-Strike, and that means that Envy able to take him down. The piercing arrow does come on through, but there's give and take in the game of League of Legends, and Genji are now taking a lot after giving the jacks. And that is going to be inhibitor number one falling down. Bot lane is now open as well. Nailed it. Faze now going to move towards his top side. Okay. Oh, there's a TP really flank. close by. Yeah, and there's a Weaver's Wall to come through as well. Paze going to be slowed down. And he flashes over the wall. Lehens is going to turn up as now Morgan gets into that back line. But there's the first cleanse for Paze. And he gets himself to relative safety. Now Genji are closing in. And it is a bloodbath. That's going to be the first one as these Ren sets start to come through. It's the double. The other 80 carry picks up a double himself as now Canyon wants to take down Morgan. The jungler versus the top laner. But it is still looking pretty good for Canyon as Morgan is live. Still, he's going to get smoked. And a leap strike, I'm sure, is going to come off cooldown at some point. And there it is. That's going to be the ace, and Gen G are now going to push forward. That game one was not exactly the game one Bro was looking for. Gen G just took that snowball and hurled it down the mountain, completed yeah. the download, yeah. and can then push through for the 2-1. That. Uh, and again, I feel like Brion, that draft is pretty strong, pretty cohesive. I don't have any complaints about it, but... Uh, oh. That's an Aurelian Soul. That is an Aurelian Soul. So we've seen this pick just yesterday. Good luck. Yeah, we'll uh, just have to see whether they can make this one work. Breon, lives on the line here in this series. Let's see how it goes in this particular game. As Morgan is going to uh, find a little bit of damage under Keen. Joby doing that spam the Q very, very quickly thing that uh, Aurelian Souls really like to do. Just to grab themselves that one tick, you know? It's gone pretty okay so far. Um, when will it stop going okay is the question. Is That is a lot of damage. Lahens already having to get out of there, but Envy is followed up. He is likely to go down, but First Blood still going over to the Callista is great news for them. Unfortunately, won't be in this lane to lap up these minions that are heading towards the turret. And that is going to be the advantage for Gen G, but still, a great oh. move, and now a little bit of a kerfuffle in the jungle. That is Canyon locking down his red buff. We'll see whether that is going to be the end of it, and it is. Yes. Oh, seeing a bit oh, more. Yeah, never mind. Vault Breaker doesn't actually land the damage, though, which could be unfortunate here for Gideon. Keen wanting to come over to help out, but you can see Morgan, he's just going to bypass the turret here and look to help Gideon lock this one down. Lahens is roaming, though, so this is dangerous times. There is another more to come through there. 
as he's down to about 100. Uh, oh, the Volt Breaker, the last auto attack, and that is going to be Lahens painting his way towards a second kill for Gen G. Morgan now getting followed as the red buff on this uh, uh, this way is being a problem as Canyon cantering after him, and Kane's like, where did my lane opponent go? Yeah, they should. it doesn't feel on the same level, though, you know? It's been a while since we've seen us. Okay, Fate's Call going to come through here as Lahens will be around to try and help out Pays, but he doesn't necessarily want to be. Handshake goes wide. Canyon going to be followed by Gideon, so that should spell the end of the aggression. Yeah, Canyon in his top side going to be taking that jungle as, okay, Keen. Let's throw that one out. Hostile Takeover doesn't exactly find too much there as Effort does making it his way in. That is a decent ultimate from Gideon though, and they lock down Pays. Still, it's going to be a one for one and almost a one for two, but Gideon able to tank up that last shot. So Gideon Diff starting to become true here in this game. As they I think that's safe. All right, well, Fate's Call going to come down towards this bottom side. They get the knockup. There's the handshake onto Pays as well as Gideon just goes into the wall with the Vault Breaker, unfortunately. So they're not able to make that one work. And Canyon, he'll find a Magnet Storm onto two. Envy does have the bailout running, and he still has to flash because they knew that they weren't going to be able to get on top of anyone. Oh, the ulti comes down as oh. Envy. There's the snipe from Lehens. It almost looked silly, comical from Chovy, but he just knew that was going to be enough. Didn't end up doing so, and oh, seen him repeat right. right here. Yeah, there's another one. That is a lot of damage going down on top of this Aurelian Soul. He's surviving for forever, and he's still up. Okay, never mind. He just flaps his way out. Well, he doesn't flap because that's Smolder. Uh, Aurelian Soul doesn't do that. As Canyon's going to have to flash Crash down. Envy still putting sticks in and is going to be able to get that one to work out. The bailout, not even necessary here. Just utilized for a bit of extra attack speed, and Envy now able to get himself out. So four, two, and zero here for the Callista. Yeah, and, and as a as a pro lever, our days have, have been better, you know? Yeah. Has now improved with uh, Shelly going on over, is now Chovy going to be put on a leash once again. There's an ulti, in fact, as Envy's going to get slowed down, but Cease and Assist is going to come on through, and Chovy, I don't think he's escaping this one. That is 400 gold straight over to the Vi. So they'll get Shelly, and they'll take down the Dragon. Still trying to keep himself safe. Does want his health bar to be a little bit larger than this as they have started off this dragon. Genji in position, though, as Fate's Call going to be used very early on in the fight is now Keen getting himself amongst it for the first time is what it feels like here in a team fight for Genji. Is now Morgan chased down and breathed on here by Chovy. Magnus Storm comes on forward as Morgan tries to get it done, but it's just death from above. Double kill instantly here for Chovy, who's looking for even more, just slowing them down over and over again with this breath of light. And now Lahens, I mean, 1v1 as some supportal combat does come on through there. Misses the ulti though as the Ignite in uh, anger is still going to be able to take him down. The singularity is what does it in the end. And Gen G still once again, not going to have that. Oh, Envy. That is, uh, yeah, Flash needs to be blown as high value is this Huey pick thus far. The more really working out. Now Gen G looking to press in. Only a couple of minions left remaining as Canyon looking for an opportunity. Does manage to find the Shattering Strike and another ulti flies down. Hostile Takeover comes in. They need to focus on this turret that's doing so much work. Canyon goes down to that one. And now Chovy, uh, one versus four. He is really dead. And Gen G bought, bit off a little more than they could chew. You know what, why not? Why not? There's a lot of poke on the enemy team that's really going to make it difficult, so that's probably why not. But yeah, lower health bars and a very big keen would be the why not that I'd be looking for as effort is dead. Yep, There's Aaron is going to be able to finish uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, my question was answered in front of my yeah. eyes. Yeah. Um, Chovy does actually breathe this down very, very quickly. There's plenty of time to get in, though. Karis needs to get some poke down. Yeah. Gideon moving on over. Keen just trying to get him out of there. As you can see, he's being thrown around like a punching bag. All Out does come on through here. They should be able to take down the Kasante, but the Baron is already there. Lahens trying to walk his way out, gets slowed up for a moment, but should be all right. Oh, the flash Q is massive from Karras. And that's a triple kill out of nowhere here for Envy. Pays. Oh, he's not going anywhere. That is going to be the snare coming through. And is there a Baron left available? Oh. The answer is no, as Gideon clears up the last one. Oh, dear. Cue the yakety sacks as Genji are all lying on the floor. And getting the double value uh, from that big one as they tried to round the corner is now Gideon going to be flashing in a very weird way. Uh, that is a way you could flash. Yes, out of all the directions, that is certainly one of them. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know if the Raz valuable. I think maybe after. You don't get as many, but I don't think the Raz valuable. Oh dear. Uh, Effort is gonna have to be face gold once again. <laughs> Constantly getting caught out, but at least he does have the ability to get. Oh dear. Now Gideon trying to get in there. They just swap positions. Never mind. But another Magnus Storm is going to punish him, and another ulti comes down from Chovy. Decent Q damage there as well. But look at how long range Gen G are, and they're still doing so much work. Morgan trying to do what he can as Keen. So many sticks in him, and he explodes into Cinders. The bailout not going to be doing too much here as Envy gets a little bit of a. Uh, Awkward surprise as Canyon was right there, and that is going to mean that he explodes as well. Chovy getting to work on this inner turret, and Karis is just trying to get the heck out of there. It is a one for four. Maybe eventually. Bro are like, we'll start it again so that then we can peel off, and one of us can uh, die, and then again? they'll start the Baron, well, and it'll be fine. Oh dear. Okay, Pay's just going to kill Morgan. So he's the sacrifice this time around. Let's see what can happen as Envy is going to snap. Oh my goodness, the Fates Call does come on through. Oh, not quite able to land the damage there is Lahans. But another Magnet Storm is going to spell the end of Karras. He did do a fair bit of damage, at least beforehand. As now Envy, yeah, wrong direction for that one, unfortunately. So it's a triple for Wait. the big old dragon. But Gideon That's going to be another one, as it's Keen that picks that up. But Gideon did get the croaks. 4,400 gold lead in the mid lane. Huh. Pretty substantial. That is um, a, a, a large lead. I think that gives more kudos to Karis for doing so much damage. As oh. now Gideon looking for that backline does manage to find Pays, but that is a huge meteorite that has come down, and Gideon finds himself alone. Keen dives underneath the turret. They do manage to take down Envy, though. The Q, not enough to actually finish him oh. off, and now it's Lahans just able to lay down artillery fire, and Morgan now in the fountain. Trying to contend with a gigantic singularity. Man, the amount of uh, just large abilities that can be thrown into this fountain. He probably I could, but probably instead, the Nexus turrets are going to be the focus. They breathe, and yeah, there he goes. Uh, Piercing Arrow is going to be what finishes him off 7, 2, and 14 in the end. And that's actually a maths equation. Kind of cool there, as the Nexus does fall, and Gen G will finish off this round, Robin, undefeated. So he is still the 80 carry. He didn't get carried. <laughs> um, but very close. Very close. 100 damage off being carried in that particular moment. But Thank you very much, guys. This is Deer for the POG interview translation, joined by the players of Gen G, who just finished playing their last match of 2024 LCK Spring regular season. Congratulations. First of all, Keen. <laughs> oh, what a nice cheer uh, merch. It's very pretty. There are a lot of uh, fans holding it today. And Keen, this was your first regular season as a part of Gen G, and you ended up taking first place and advanced into the playoffs round two. How do you feel? Uh, advancing into the playoffs round two, I'm very happy about, and I'm very relieved, and I'm very happy about getting first place in the regular season. And it looked like you were trying different things during the draft, and you guys certainly delivered a dominating performance. And with the playoffs coming up, what's your main focus going into today's match? To be honest, I don't think we have a clear focus in our practice process currently. But we're just going through all of our champion polls and just coming up with some uh, some of the best com compositions that we can come up with as a team. It's such a good day for everyone. And since everyone's here and the fans are here, um, we're curious, when are you going to cook tapagetti to your team? You know, I mentioned that I would do it for the next workshop, that I would cook for them. I feel like I'm getting rushed right now. Now, for now, the tentative date is the next workshop. For the upcoming playoffs round two, please share your resolution. For the playoffs round two, uh, we'd be able to watch other teams play in the playoffs and we can prepare ourselves and uh, just play off of there. So we'll make sure that we are prepared. 
In Canyon, we'll be next. So this was your regular season with your new teammates. Looking back, how was it? I'm really happy that we ended up uh, first place. Just looking back, I feel like I had new experiences and I learned a lot. So, as expected from Canyon, you have shown the best performance as a jungler. And you now have a new best friend, Rel. And how are you so good at her? You have nine wins and one loss with her. So, is she your uh, tier one pick? I feel like she is available for any time, any sort of scenario. And I feel like as long as I grow my mastery with her, it would be a very versatile pick. And Canyon, this year marks your sixth year since your debut, and you have just completed your 500th LCK game. So, any word to the fans? I didn't realize that I have already reached 500 games. And for our, my fans who have supported me all along, thank you so much. And moving forward, I want to make sure that I get even more wins in the future. Thank you. And Chobi will be up next. What a brilliant performance yet again. And with 1300 POG points, you will be awarded with Player of the Split. How do you feel? Yeah, so I am confirmed to be the first place in the POG standings, and now I can go to bed without any worries. And in game one, there was a champion that has only been played three times, Silas, and you played him to get your first uh, POG on, in today's match. And Silas has appeared after one, a month and a half, and historically, LC, in the LCK, Silas is favored in the matchup against Talia with a score of 7 3. Is he still favored over Talia? I feel like I ended up picking Silas because he just overall very well-rounded champion currently. I feel like the way we used him in our comp actually really helped in the end. Now you have only 12 days remaining until the playoffs. What will you focus on in the preparation pro process? We'll make sure that we watch other teams' matches and get a better read on the meta, and I think that would be the best in, in our preparation. And as the LCK 3P champion, what will be your goal? We want to do well in the playoffs and make it to the finals and make sure that we get another champion title. Now, Pays, following last summer, you have achieved another undefeated round robin. How do you feel? In our last match, uh, two matches ago, we dropped the game. But yeah, I'm happy that we were able to get an undefeated round. Hey, your kill tempo, your kill count is insane. And just this spring, you have 202 kills and taking first place. And you have already 790 kills all time and you're approaching 800 kills. So what are your thoughts on your ability to pick up so, so many kills? I feel like since I'm an AD carry, I ask for a lot of kills. And because of a good teammate uh, and my ability to actually look at angles to pick up kills, I think that's how I'm able to get so many kills. And according to Game 1, voice comms, your teammates are very generous about pentas anymore. Last year, Chobi gave me a lot of kills, but Keen... This is our first season together, but you know, it's a little heartbreaking that he won't give me as many kills. Thoughts, Keen? You know, Pace has so many pentakills under his belt that, you know, I think that other, other players really deserve some more kills. So, yeah, I think I deserve some pentakills, other players as well. Any word to your teammates uh, for the remaining? 
Let's do well for the remaining remainder of the, the playoffs, guys. And Lee Hen. And you have rejoined Genji this year, and you're doing really well. So how would you reflect back to the times you spent with your teammates? I think we're able to wrap up really strongly, and I think we'll do even better. Did you expect to finish first place in the regular season? Of course, I didn't predict that. But to be honest, I believe that this, uh, the regular season is important, um, and not as important as this, at the same time. What's important will be the playoffs. And in Game 1, you picked the nerfed Malka, and in Game 2, you played way for the first time in your career. These were the picks that I have been practicing, but today I just felt like playing them and I think I did really well. And Paze, how does it feel to play alongside these sort of supports? You know, Lee Hens has been really practicing Hui a lot, and he's really good at it, so I think that's that's why I was fine with it. I think the results really just is telling. And since you are the first place, you get to select your opponent in playoffs round two. Any prediction on who your opponent will be? I suppose I'll have to do that, huh? Uh, we were the first place uh, regular season last year, too. I don't think we will be uh, able to give you any information, but we'll discuss with Kian. And as the team captain, what will Junji's goal be? I think everyone's been playing so great so far, and playoffs is what matters the most. And our goal will be uh, the champion, so we'll make sure that we win it all. And this will be the end of the interview with Genji. Thank you very much, and back to the space.